Hello, and welcome to this Sage 300 training video. Our topic today is going to be recurring payables in the accounts payable module. There are three key elements we are going to explore in this training video. The first is creating or maintaining a schedule, which will control the recurring entry. The second will be setting up the recurring payable. And the third will be running the recurring payable batch. Let's begin not in order entry, but in common services. In common services, there's a function called schedules. The schedule determines a couple things. It's going to determine the time cycle that the recurring payable happens on and which users, if any, receive a reminder alert to process the payable. Let's take a look at an existing schedule code. Here we have a schedule code called monthly. We have a code, we have a description for it, we can see that no users are set to be up on a reminder. And then we determine the recurring period and the frequency. In this case, it is a monthly recurring period every one month on the first day of the month. Let's take a look at some of these functions a little bit more by creating a new schedule code. We're going to create a schedule code for the 20th of the month. So I'm going to call that 20th month. And in my description, we'll say the 20th of the month. Now in our reminders, we can set up either no users, all users, and that is every single user in Sage, or a specific individual to receive the reminder. So in this case, we're going to say specific user. We're going to select demo user, and we will remind them one day in advance. Now in our recurring periods, we can choose daily, say every day, or maybe on specific work days. We can choose weekly, every week, which day of the week, or you could do something like every other week on every other Monday. So here, by saying weekly, every two weeks and selecting Monday, you've selected every two weeks, so every other Monday. Semi-monthly. Here you have two options, either the first and the middle of the month, or the middle of the month and the last day of the month. We have a monthly option. This is what we're going to use for this one, where we're going to say every month on the 20th of the month. You can use this frequency every number of months and say every three months if you want something that is quarterly. Then of course there is a yearly option down here, but we're going for monthly. Let's hit add. Let's now go to accounts payable, AP vendors, recurring payables to create our recurring payable template. So the first thing we'll need to do is enter a code. This is going to be for cleaning services. So I'm going to call it clean and our vendor number. I'm going to look up here and find Fred's cleaning service. All right. I'm going to give a schedule code. Here is our 20th of the month. And our start date is going to be the 20th. And we're, we have no expiration date on it. However, if we wanted to, we can say this will expire on a particular date 
or after a total maximum amount has been processed or a certain number of invoices have been processed. This is an ongoing service, so I'm going to leave this at no expiration. Oh, and I made a mistake. I'm gonna come up here and put a description in. Because I put in a particular vendor, their details are automatically populated in here, such as their account set, a remit to address, their terms codes, their 1099 information. I can put a description in here. And maybe I issued a purchase order number and I can reference that or in this particular field here. By then going to my details, my office expense line has already been populated because that was set up on my vendor. So I just need to put in my amount in here. If I was to use a distribution set, I could select that and say what amount should be distributed and have that populate in these fields. If I needed to maintain any optional fields, I could do those here. My tax information, as it will appear on the particular invoice, is going to show up here. This particular case, it should not be taxable. So I'm going to change that here in my test company and make this a non-taxable invoice. And I do need to put my C 1099 amount in here to make that a 1099 transaction. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the add button and close. Our third step is to create a recurring payment batch. To do that, I'm going to come up here to periodic processing, create recurring payable batch. First thing it's going to ask me is what is the run date? I'm going to put that as today. The next option is, do I want to select by recurring payable code, by vendor number or vendor group? I'm going to select by code. And if I want, I can select just a specific transaction or by leaving it blank from blank to ZZZ, I'm going to pick all transactions in the system that are possible. In this case, I know I just want to run my cleaning one. So I'm going to select that here. And then I'm going to hit the process button. One invoice was created and placed in batch 62. Close that. Now I can go over to AP transactions. Look at my invoice batch list. Here we go. Recurring payables run today. I'm going to open that up and review that. So here is my recurring payable document number, my purchase order number, my document total, my 1099 amount, all the elements that I set up in the system. So all I need to do is go ahead and post this, and then I can pit this particular transaction on my next payment batch run. I'll post and close and I'm all set. If you need to create a recurring payable outside of using the normal re create recurring payable batch, there is one option for you. If you come into the recurring payable screen, select your payable code, there is a create invoice button here at the bottom of the screen. If you take the default next scheduled, it's going to be as if you ran it for next month. And then next month when it comes through, it would not trigger. However, if you change the date here to other, you can set the date to whatever you need it to be and hit the process button. Our next invoice date is still 
next month. So we are able to have had a second invoice generated based on that recurring payable entry. And if we come here to our AP transactions, here is our initial one. Here's the one we just created. So if for some reason the initial one got deleted or you have to adjust it out and put a new one in, you can certainly do that with the create invoice button there at the bottom of the recurring payable entry screen. Thank you for watching this Sage 300 training video and have a great day.